What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed. All about pressure washing and code IQ. And in today's video, we're going to be giving you guys the complete blueprint to a million-dollar wash business. I'm here we with are. a special guest, Mike. How's it going, man? Man, it's I'm uh, I'm really happy to be here today. Yeah, Mike had another run in with the law today. Um, I don't. Well, we don't have to share it on this video, but that's one of your favorite well, things. Yeah, but police are always like all up in my grill, right? Like. I'm just driving down the road, right? Minding my own business. I was on my phone, of course. I've got a car that drives itself, okay? I don't need to be paying attention. I don't need to be off my phone. And I look, oh, well, I hear this whoop. And I look over and there's there's this white vehicle and there's some dude in wind, tin and windows. He's like yelling at me like this. And I was like, what? And he and he's pointing. And, and I, so I'm like, yeah, whatever. He passes a little bit and he's in a Ford Escape of all things. So I was like, that's weird. So I and I took a picture of his his license plate because it doesn't look like a cop car to me, right? I thought maybe he was one of these guys that like drives around and like tries to pull handsome guys over and like has their way with them, right? Like that happens all the time to me. But you get taken story, advantage of a lot. I'm like, sexually. yeah, yeah. They're always like, I'm gonna give you a speeding ticket, and I'm like, I start crying. If that doesn't work, then I turn, you know, I turn on the charm. But uh, <laughs> I don't. I get angry quickly, right? Because it's you. You're allowed to be angry at a cop. It's not against the law. Anyway. Uh, so we're driving for like ever. I turned down the road to like go to my house and, uh, and he follows me. And so as I'm going, he goes, whoop, whoop, flashes his light. So I pull over and he walks up to my car and he doesn't even look like a cop, right? He's wearing like a t-shirt and he's got some janky badge on. And he, he walks up and he's like, um, and I go, what? And he says, um, I followed you for like two miles and you were texting the entire time. And I said, I wasn't texting. And he goes, I saw you don't, I'm not going to argue with you. I've watched you for like two miles texting. And I said, first of all, I wasn't texting. I was watching a video and my car drives itself. And he said, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, it's illegal to be on your phone. And I was like, well, okay. And he says, well, I'm, I'm going to give you a verbal warning. And I was like, that's great. Uh, and he goes, I took your license plate number down. I was like, good. I took your license plate down too. Cause I thought you were a fake cop because you're in a Ford Escape. And he's like, I'm a real cop. I'm like, well, who are you with? And he told me who he was with. And then he goes, what's your name? I'm like, Mike. And he goes, okay, well, have a good day, Mike. So like, dude, don't waste my time, right? If you're going to give me a ticket, give me a ticket. Don't pull me over to like, like flex, right? With your gay ass. Am I allowed to say that? Is that politically incorrect? Like you're driving a Ford Escape. Come on, guy. Anyway, give me Elon Musk's number. It's not your fault, Mike, that they made the car self-driving. I mean, you pay for the feature. You deserve yes. to use the feature. You got other things to do, you know? Yeah, I, I, I've got things to do, right? Busy guy. And, and Busy guy. wasting my time on Johnny Law, right? And don't get me wrong. I love the police. The police are some of my favorite people. Five um, the 5 The 5-0, right? Like, um, but at the end of the day, my love for the police lies with the fact that they protect me. They don't waste my time, right? When I call you because I'm getting robbed, that's when I like you. When you're protecting, you know, citizens, like that's, but you're not protecting anybody from my self-driving car. Stupid. All right. Well, that gave uh, everybody enough time to get in here. We're going to be talking about today, uh, the blueprint, five steps, five easy steps, you know, um, depending upon Mike's got the issue with the thumbs up again. Jeez, I thought we solved that. Um, we're going to be talking about five easy steps to scale your business. Not easy, but to a million dollars a year. How to start a million dollar wash business. Before we jump into that, though, I do want to make you guys aware of uh, one thing in particular, and I'm going to have to screen share for this, and I don't have it set up. So bear with me here for two seconds. Window, boom. And I apologize for Justin's lack of preparation. We are giving away $5,000 to Quote IQ's top affiliate. If you guys aren't a part of Quote IQ, go to myquoteiq.com right now. You can sign up for $1 to any tier. You can also use the paid version, I mean the free version of the app where you can send estimates, keep track of customers, send invoices, collect payments, and uh, you can do all that for free uh, with the free version of the app. Or you can try any premium feature for just $1 at myquoteiq.com. But we're giving away $5,000 to the top affiliate. Once you have an account created, you go into your settings tab, you scroll to the bottom to the affiliate program, you generate your link, and every single person that you get to sign up with this link, you get 40% of their commission, of their uh, subscription for the lifetime of that customer. So if they're you know a customer for five years, 40% goes to you. And if you have the most affiliates uh, at the end of the deal, which is June 1st, then you're going to get $5,000 from myself and Mike. So anybody interested in that, check out the links in the comment section description. 
pretty sweet deal though, right, Mike? Dude, it is a phenomenally sweet deal. I love it. JG says this live. No, Duh. it's not live. I promise it's not live, JG. Um, this is a replay, and um, we are not live right now. People love to think that these are not live. Y'all help me to be successful this year. Second year cleaning. Hey, second year hits different, Bob. That's all I'm gonna say. I do appreciate you. Uh, you know, you're two. Us know that. Your two hits different, but yeah, Bob. Best of luck. Your two yeah. kill it, man. We love it. Uh, clean wash. Love Mike's rants. I don't that, remember ranting. I just like to talk. That makes one of us. Uh, so I'm <laughs> glad. I'm glad. <laughs> You might be alone on that, Clean Wash. But anyway, let's jump into it. Uh, so the five levels. We're going to start from the absolute bottom. We're going to walk you guys uh, through uh, the levels of the candy cane forest. First and foremost, we have the consideration phase, right? You might stumble across some videos oh here on YouTube. God. It might look like a great opportunity for you. You might go and look at some of our products, some of our courses. You might be looking into the equipment. How much does it cost? Yada, yada, yada. But the consideration phase is, is step number one. Mike, you want to talk a little bit about this phase? Okay, is this the consideration phase, like the actual people that are genuinely considering this, or is this the phase where people are making excuses to why they can't do it or why they're waiting to do it? So this is, it, it encompasses everything. It just encompasses everyone that is even considering starting a pressure washing business. This is step one of how to get your million dollar business. Now, the key to success is, is how quickly you can transition from phase number one, which is the consideration phase, into phase number two, which is in which is the side hustler. So consideration phase, Mike, maybe take us back to the beginning of your business. I know you've told this story before, but maybe kind of walk us through where you were at when you were considering this opportunity. Well, for me, my you know, my situation was was probably similar to a lot of people, um, but also a, a little bit different than probably most. And that's because I was in a position where I knew somebody that had a small pressure washing business. He was going to sell it or dismantle it, sell, you know, piecemeal out the, the equipment. And I had the opportunity to buy it. And there was um, very, actually very little consideration at all. It was, it was, I don't want to say it was a knee jerk reaction because I was being guided by somebody who I trusted and who I had faith, had my best interest uh, at, at heart. And this is, I, I've, I've said it before, he was a mentor of mine um, for many, many years. You know, a, a friend, a mentor, somebody that I looked up to, a very, very successful business person. Um, and I've said it many times, arguably, probably one of the wealthiest people in Savannah. And in my opinion, probably one of the smartest guys I know too. And he was there the day that this guy said, Hey, I'm going to sell my wa You know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. And I said, what are you going to do with the uh, pressure washing business? And I didn't even care. Like it was never even a thought I had a job a full time, you know, uh, I was working for a big company at the time. And, uh, he said, yeah, I'm just going to probably sell it or, or sell off the equipment. And my buddy, my mentor says, Mike's going to buy it. I was like, what? He's like, dude, this is perfect for you. You know, with your sales ability, with, you know, you, you know, your connections, you will be able to take this and really run with it. And I think it's, it's, this is the right move for you because he'd been involved in many other little entrepreneurial ventures that, you know, he, he'd watched me do various things. Some of them did well, some of them, you know, didn't, they weren't failures, but it wasn't the, the big money that I was hoping for. So, um, <clears throat> Greg tells me I'm going to buy it. I go home and tell my wife that uh, Greg told me I was going to buy this pressure washing business. She said, what do you know about it, about a business running your own pressure washing business? I said, absolutely nothing. But, you know, this is Greg thinks it's going to be a good idea. She also has the same, um, you know, belief in, in him and his success and his ability to kind of, you know, see what might be possible. And she said, let's do it. And so I took out an equity line on my, on my house. Um, I think I, I want to say I spent, I gave him 25 grand for the business, which was a big chunk of change back then. And, um, I bought the business and it turned into, you know, not overnight, but the bottom line was I had an opportunity and I took the opportunity and it paid off. I didn't waste a lot of time thinking about it. Well, am I going to form an LLC first or am I going to get insurance first? Um, or am I going to do this or am I going to do that? Because that's what happens. I hear and I see way too many times people get caught up in the minutia, right? They get caught up in the, and, and at the end of the day, it's, 
Are you dedicated to this? Do you have faith in yourself? Do you have faith in the market? Because there is market research that goes into this. If you live in, you know, a, a town of 300 in the middle of the desert, probably a pressure washing business isn't the right choice for you, right? But if you're in a if you're in a market that can, you know, that's a viable market, then what are you going to wait around for, right? Take action, get moving, and get started. The the longer you wait. The, the more likely it's not going to happen and the, the more time is behind you that you could be actually building your business. So that was my initiation into the true entrepreneurial world that I live in, you know, full time now. So, right. So step one within the consideration phase, the absolute key is how quickly you can take action. Same story for me, Mike, a little bit different, obviously, because I didn't have an opportunity to purchase a business, uh, but I helped my dad wash both of my grandmother's houses and I was living in a little apartment at the time and I washed like the steps that I had in, in the front of it. And it made for an excellent before and after picture. From that point, I was like, I would love to do this and make money with it. So I made flyers. I passed out the flyers. And before you know it, I was in business. I didn't go out there. I didn't say, yeah, what LLC should I use or do I have the best equipment? And yeah, I probably did things wrong for a while. A lot of people who found me early on in YouTube used to make fun of me. They're like, dude, you're doing this all wrong but at least I was taking action. I wasn't the one watching the video. I was the one making the video. So if you're in the consideration phase, get out of it as quickly as possible if you want to be successful, if you want to uh, build a million dollar business. Once we've exited consideration, once we start taking action into actually starting the business, then we've made it into the side hustle phase. So Mike, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Obviously, you purchased a legitimate business, so I don't necessarily think it was a side hustle. However, um, in the beginning, the business probably evolved to where you're doing bigger things. It did. And and so like I'd almost want to rename this step or this phase, this stage, not just side hustle, but maybe side hustle part time, right? Because in my eyes, side hustle has like it's not a serious thing at all. And and there are people that are just like, yeah, I like I'll just do it on the weekends, whatever. It's it's not a business. It's a side hustle. So if you're going from the consideration stage into this next phase, whether it's a side hustle or it's a legitimate business that you plan on growing um, and scaling, then uh, I think for me, even though I did have an existing business, right? I said I paid $25,000 for it. At that point, the business annually was grossing only $45,000, right? We have about 50% margin uh, in, in this business, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, depending on who you are and, and what your business model is. So it was grossing the, you know, about what I paid for it. Right. So about 20 ish thousand dollars is what uh, the net profit was in that business. The first year that I bought it, that is side hustle money. That is part-time money, right? We make that within a month or less now. And that was the yearly thing because, that guy who I bought the business from, it was a side business for him. He was in the finance world and he had he had hired a guy or two to you know wash sidewalks and, and do some things, but it wasn't a full-time. It was a Saturday, Sunday, and that's just because that's all the business this guy was able to get as far as the work that he was targeting, which was dumpster pads, receiving areas, sidewalks, stuff like that for restaurants. Uh, and and you know, 45 grand for two days a week uh, a year, is not terrible, but that's not what I wanted, right? I wanted something and I knew that this was something that I could scale. Now we continued to do the, uh, the, the, the side hustle work, but I also was leveraging relationships that I had. Uh, one of which was the guy who told me to buy the business who owned, I think he had like 14 convenience stores at the time. Now he's probably got 40. Uh, but he had 14 high end convenience stores and they, and I was like, we need to clean these. So we started doing those on a, it was a, I want to say it was a biweekly basis. Um, canopies, the, the concrete, the sidewalks, the, the, you know, everything. And then I had another friend who was a CEO of another big convenience store change. And it was great because we all worked out at the same gym. And those guys were always kind of button heads, you know, flexing who's got the better business. Anyway, I think those guys had, I don't know, maybe 20, Stations, stations, gas stations, convenience stores at the time. So I was able to quickly utilize uh, people that I knew to grow the business quickly. Then after a while, um, many things happened, but I decided it was time to really kind of branch out and look more into residential, more into multifamily, because I thought that that was a better business for me. And uh, and then we slowly got out of some of that 
the flat work, if you will, the commercial work, uh, as far as, you know, sidewalks and dumpster pads and stuff like that. So, um, I, I think, uh, you know, it, 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 it can take a little bit longer than you think, you know, everybody wants to think, Oh, okay. I pulled the trigger. Now I've got a business and what am I going to do now? Cause I don't have a bunch of customers. Well, it does take time. Um, and so that's when this, this phase, you know, this is the growth stage. This is where you really got to decide who you are. You know, do you have grit? Do you have determination? Do you have what it takes to not only do the work, right? But do you have the, 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 the wherewithal to run a business successfully, to market a business so you can generate the lead flow so you can grow, right? That that's one of the most important parts of this. I don't know if I went off on a tangent or not. No, you did good. Okay, so a couple of things I want to touch on. I want to pull from what Mike had to say. First and foremost, he leveraged his relationship and or relationships with others in order to you know grow the business, which is huge in the side hustle phase, right? Because we want to take advantage of every opportunity that's in front of us. Secondly, we need to figure out how to get more lead flow because in the side hustle stage or the part-time stage, it's like you're just doing it once or twice a week, right? If you want to transition into the next stage, which is the full timer, then the lead flow is something that we really got to knock down. So if you guys need any help with lead flow, be sure to check out uh, the resource page, pwcourse.com. I'll have a link for this in the comment section description. The local domination two course is the best course we've ever built with regards to marketing your service business. We put all of our best information in here, the stuff that lands us 10, 20, 30, 40,000 thousand dollar jobs for Mikey's landed a hundred thousand uh, dollars in jobs and the cost of it is embarrassingly low for the fact that you can land those types of jobs uh with this product so be sure to check that out if you guys haven't I want to also highlight a comment in the chat from Edgar Edgar says that he started running um a pre-made video ad that we had done for him using quote IQ ads if you guys haven't seen the ads that we put together you can go to qiqads.com uh I have a video explainer right here on how we did $13,000 in basically one month running ads, the structure that I use. And you can also get pre-made templates that follow the same, um, you know, structure. So if you guys want to check that out, link in the comment section description, but Air, uh, Edgar basically said that he got two jobs with the ads upsold for gutter cleaning and window cleaning and fence cleaning, which is what we tell you guys to do all the time. And the customer actually complimented him, said that they like quote IQ because the way everything looked and it was super professional. So, the going from side hustle part-time phase, going from side hustle, it's so hard to show anything. I know it sucks. I just pulled up, uh, I, you know, we get comments all the time, but Edgar, um, he's with revival pressure washing and window cleaning. And, uh, I, I just wanted to see which business it was because, you know, we see all of these, uh, the folks that come in to get their video ads made and, and they send in their logos and whatnot. But uh, Edgar, we appreciate it, man. And I'm glad that it worked with getting tons of like, we personally have been running these ads, right? My business, Justin has as well. And they, they're crushing, right? Video ads are next level. When we talk about, you know, like Facebook advertising, um, and I've said it a million times, I'm not the biggest fan of Facebook, right? Because in my opinion, people don't go to Facebook with the intent to hire a pressure washing business. They're there for other reasons. They go to Google. That's why for years, my focus and my ad spend was on Google ads. So, you know, Justin has always been a huge proponent of Facebook ads and he's really kind of honed it in. And, and then, you know, what, what you see over time is things all start to look the same. And that is the worst thing that can happen to um, your, your marketing when everything looks the same. Because guess what? When it all looks the same, nobody has any interest, especially when they're not there with intent. It's with, with interruption marketing, which is what the kind of marketing that you do on Facebook, you have to grab their attention. You have to basically, you know, grab them by the throat, punch them in their face, get them to stop scrolling and, and let them, you know, kind of feast on the visuals of what your ad is. And if it's just it's a couple before and afters, like what we've always been doing on these things, people are just going to keep going. They don't care. But when they get a video, when they have satisfying footage, you know, these are the things that are going to make people stop scrolling. They're going to make them pay attention and it's going to get your phone ringing and get your calendar full. That's what we are doing here. And I'm glad Edgar has had success. We've sold a bunch of these uh, ads. They absolutely crush. But you don't have to do it yourself. That's the beautiful, or you don't have to, you can do it yourself. You don't have to buy an ad from us. Um, Justin, like he said, on qiqads.com, you can go there and you can watch his video. He gives you the complete format. You take the entire script, right? Transcribe the script, voice it over yourself, go 
out and get really high quality, super good video, you know, high, high quality. Um, and then you're obviously going to want some, some music behind it. You're going to want really good editing and you're going to want, you know, all the captions and everything, all of the components that, that Justin teaches about in his, in his training on this, this free training on the, on the, that website. But you can do it all yourself. You don't have to pay anything or you can be what, you know, like Edgar and be intelligent and know that you can just be like, screw it. Like I'll pay. I think right now they're like, I think it's $50 off or something like that. You're, I mean, you're going to pay probably what one, how much are they? I don't even know. They're not that expensive for, for like what Edgar got. Look, he said he got two jobs off of it. Once he got the jobs, he then upsold a gutter cleaning and a window cleaning and a fence cleaning. It's like, Okay, great. Yeah. There, the ad's paid for now. Everything after this is complete profit. Well, one of those jobs paid for the ad because the ads are undervalued, right? The beautiful thing is, is because what we do, we're able to create these things very, you know, cost effectively for you guys with your own logo, with your own, you know, your company information, phone number, website, custom voiceover, right? A beautiful voiceover talking about your business and, and talking about the pain points of the customers and how your business with your logo and our beautiful, you know, video video and editing and, and sound and everything it's that, really you know, it, it's priceless. And, but what, back to what I was saying is we've been running them. And then we were like, you know what? A lot of people have been asking like, Hey, can you guys make these for us? And we are like, no, we don't have time to do this. And then we thought, actually, there's a real need for this. And we've got the format. We've got the formula. We're going to give you the formula and format for free, right? Justin laid it all out, or you can, you know, grab something from the website. It's super cool. The other cool thing is, is if you guys do get uh, the ads off of the website, I'll show you this real quick. You're actually going to get a um, um, ad secrets by me. So I'm going to show you the back end of how I run the ad, how I set up the ad and all the little tweaks that I make in order to try to get the most out of it. So um, I do show you exactly how to make the ad here. But if you guys want kind of like a behind the scenes on what I'm doing with regards to setting up the ad, I would definitely check. Uh, I would definitely get, you know, get one of these ads and then follow the directions with regards to running it. Uh, I want to mention a couple people from the chat. Bob said, switch to Quote IQ this year from Jobber. Much better. Even the free version takes payments. Absolutely. Free version. Keep up with customers and estimates, invoices, and collect payments all for free. Uh, Nathan says that he's in Australia. Can I use Quote IQ? Absolutely. Um, you can. And look, Clean Wash says, we grabbed three ads. We appreciate you, Clean Wash. Thank you so much. Clean Wash also says, do you guys do coaching or one-on-one -on -one mentorship? We are actually going to be doing um, a class here coming up. So if you guys are interested, or it's really going to be a challenge more so because me and Mike, we do these courses, right? The courses are great. We send you the login. You get all the videos immediately. You get to watch them. But a lot of people have a hard time implementing what's in the course and being held accountable to that. So me and Mike are actually putting together a challenge right now. It's going to be a, a double your business in 60 days challenge. And uh, we're going to do pretty much one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's going to be a small group setting. So if you're interested in that clean wash, uh, shoot us an email and we'll send you over some uh, more information on that. Anyway, back to the five steps though. So like I said, step number one is consideration, right? How do we go from consideration to part-time? We take action. Step two is part-time, obviously. How do we go from step two to step three, which is part-time to full-time? If step one to step two was taking action, then step two to step three is going to be taking right action, dialed action, right? We want to leverage our relationships. We want to build a lead flow that's able to sustain a full-time um, you know, full time schedule. We want to reinvest into equipment. A lot of times what you get started with is not what's optimal in order to go full-time. So we need to reinvest. That was something that I did early on. I used my dad's pressure washer whenever I first got started, two and a half gallons a minute. By the time I was going a little bit more full-time, I was in school at the time, um, but I, I graduated up to a four gallon a minute. It was just something that needed to happen for me to be able to get jobs done. So reinvesting into equipment, and then we want to find more lucrative work. So we talk about it all the time on the channel, washing roofs, lucrative work, house washes, driveway cleanings, bundle deals, um, upselling to customers whenever you're on site. If you get good at these things, why are you laughing, Mike? Ashton Crisp. Ashton Crisp. If you get good, if you get good at these things, the selling on site and all these different things, you're going to be able to transition from somebody who's just part time into somebody that's full time. But we never advise that right out of the gate because it's just a bad way to go. Uh, Mike, once we've transitioned into full time, once we get the schedule booked out, once we've got the right equipment to get the jobs done, once we know how to upsell, once we've got um, you know the right stuff on the calendar, not just flat work, uh, then we want to focus from going from full time 
to actually getting off the truck. Now you jump steps. You pretty much automatically got off the truck because you purchased the business. So from your perspective, what do you think is the hardest part for guys that are going full time and trying to get off the truck after that to get to step four? Oh, I know what it is because I hear from guys all the time. And what I think it is, is it's the ability to let go, right? You, the ability to let go and, and empower somebody else to be your representative on the ground doing the work, right? Um, you can still be the boss. You can still be, you know, the chief executive officer of, of everything, but in order for your business to scale, in order for it to grow, you have to understand that you will have to relinquish some of it to somebody else. Right. And, and the more that you can relinquish the better. And the more that you can relinquish, the more time you're going to have to focus on other things that will move the needle in your business, like the marketing, the sales, right? Imagine if you hire somebody, right? Maybe they're a helper at first and you make that transition. You get them trained up for the way you want things to be done. Uh, then you let them out on their own and they're out there working, right? Now, think about this. When you have the ability to go out there and go meet people, go, go, you know, not door to door sales, like residential, Hey, we want to wash your house, but going into businesses and asking to talk to the facility manager, introducing yourself, uh, building those relationships, right? That's when things really start to move in a business. When, when you can remove yourself from the daily operations and focus on the administrative and the sales and the marketing side of the business, there's a reason why big companies, it's not a one man show. They, they have to have help. So allowing other people um, to help you is one of the biggest challenges I think guys have, right? Because at the end of the day, and this is something that th this is just the truth. And if there are employees that are watching this and they, they're going to say, this is bullshit, Mike, you're full of shit. I'll say, no, I'm not because I've been doing this for 20 years and I've always had employees. And I know a, nobody is ever going to be able to do it as good as I, right? No employee is ever going to be able to do it as good as you do. Understand that, right? Um, also, no employee is going to care as much as you do about your business, right? No, no employee. I don't care who it is. They don't care as much as you do. They never will. They are not incentivized. They don't have the vested interest in the business to care as much as you. Also, no employee is ever going to take care of your stuff like you do. You can take an owner operator's trailer, brand new. Okay. They bought it yesterday. You take my trailer. I bought it new yesterday, the exact same trailer, owner, operator, employee, and I've got great employees. And we come back in a year and we look at those two employees or those two trailers, the one that the owner operator, it's going to look almost brand new, right? It's going to look great. And then you're going to look at mine and that shit needs to be replaced, right? Just today. I don't know if you guys can see this, right here, this big scratch on my leg. I had to go buy a new fender for the Southeast soft wash trailer that we have because it's completely rusted out. And it's not a function of the trailer company, the manufacturer, anything with the, you know, it is, we don't take care of our stuff like, uh, and I say we, employees don't take care of their stuff like we do. So having the ability to understand Things aren't going to be as perfect. They're not going to be as good. You know, the employees aren't going to be as good a steward as you want them to be of, of every aspect of the business. That's something that's very difficult to relinquish. And that's something that you're going to have to do if you're going to want to grow and scale and add employees. Absolutely. I would say that step three to step four is the hardest out of everything. And then it's downhill after that. So, Mike, I do want to ask you a couple questions uh, with regards to going from the full time to off the truck. And obviously, we built out a whole training just for this. I don't know if you guys knew that already, but if you go to pwcourse.com, how to scale the next level is everything that Mike pretty much has done within his business, employee hiring and retention, uh, leveraging commercial jobs, business automation, remote quoting, the whole deal and the marketing. Uh, there's just a lot that goes into um, basically getting off the truck. Um, big shouts out to Mike Terman for the $99 uh, super chat. I really appreciate it. I, I hope this is going to my channel too, Mike. Because uh, I hope so too, Mike, because Justin's a young man and he's got a young child that he needs to put diapers on. <laughs> That's correct. That is correct. Okay. So I'm about to ask, I want to, uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you about three, three questions here. Obviously we built like a 10 hour training on this. So, okay. But real quick. Yeah. yeah. I do want to hit the comments first. Is that what you're going to say? Well, I was just going to say, who who was I just talking about today when we were on the phone earlier? Um, I can't remember. 
I can't remember now. I don't, we talk about so much stuff. I, I said, I, I named three people. I called them out by name and was talking specifically about, oh my God, you really? I'm so, oh, 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 Mike T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically the biggest people that, that have kind of like learned from us and taken everything and, and implemented and then taken it a step farther and made it their own. Mike T is one of those for sure. Yeah, no, we've got guys and girls that um, have, have trusted the process, right? They've invested in themselves, right? Mike Terman, ex cop up in Jersey. Like I, I think he's a Marine. And if, if you're not a Marine and you're something else, I apologize. He is a Marine, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I think Mike's probably my age, I think maybe a little younger, but this is a dude that takes no prisoners, right? This is a guy that, that doesn't hesitate. Right. I, when I don't think Mike probably went through that first stage, right? He was like, fuck it. I'm doing it. Right. And, and I'm going to do it because I know I can do it because that's what Marines do. Anybody that puts their life on the line as a cop, you know, they're not scared. And, and that's what it takes. It takes somebody with, with balls, uh, the testicular fortitude, if you will, to, to just move forward, press forward and make it work. Right. But you also have to surround yourself with people that have done it, know how to do it and are willing to teach. And Mike, um, who else I'd said, Ashley Westfall, um, Todd Catchow, right? These are all people that have taken some knowledge, education, and transformed it into multiple six-figure businesses, right? Like, I just love it, right? But that's, I just, when Mike's name pops up, like, he's one of those guys that that I look at and I'm like, dude, I can learn from him, right? Like, there are so many things that I've learned from Mike, some great marketing stuff. and uh, and and he's just a good dude. So, and he's a prime example of what happens when you do it. Right. And Mike is a guy that did it. Mike has actually gone through each of these steps. Mike now sells off portions of his business. He'll build, he, he'll build, he'll build out route work with regards to uh, gutter cleanings or, or um, dumpster pad cleanings, and then he'll sell it off to people. Like Mike is there. Mike is basically the blueprint for this. Also, this mic is also the blueprint. So that's why we're talking about it today. I want to mention a couple of people from the chat and then we're going to get into uh, some of these questions that I have for Mike with regards to getting off of the truck. Uh, clean wash. I got three jobs from the house wash video. Incredible. The house wash video is very much underpriced. We want you guys to have success with it. And that's why we did that. What is the name for the ads website? QIQads.com. QIQads.com. It'll be linked in the comment section and the description after this video as well. Um, let's keep going through some of these jibber jobber. They are overpriced. Quote IQ is so much better. Thank you so much. Savannah Washko. We appreciate it. Hey, um, you know them, you know them. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, my customers love the professional look I bring. I have closed so many jobs just because of the automation. If you guys aren't using email automation in your business, what are you doing? I like your persistence. You're very professional. Let's go ahead and schedule the other, uh, the other quote hasn't come through yet. Yours was timely and you seem to be a good businessman. These are the customer's words when you're using quote IQ. That's why we built it. So me and Mike actually talked about this the other day. We were like, you know, do we talk about quote IQ too much on the channel? And, and we really came to the conclusion that no, we don't because we literally built it. Every single feature built within it is something that Mike uses within his business in order to make more money. And that's what we want to give to you guys. Like, I don't think we, t I, you know, look and look at all these people in the comment section. They love it. They're, they're doing great things with it. We really appreciate you guys for hanging out and using it and, and being a part of it as well. And that was another thing for us. We want to build it with you guys. We want to hear the feedback. And that's what we do. We take on feedback every single day and uh, we implement it into the app. Anyway, Mike, let's get into the hardest piece about this whole equation. And that is how to get off of the truck. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about hiring. Okay. Uh, DJ said how to find good guys to wash, right? How do you find good people? How do we find reliable people? What are your tips on that? Okay. Uh, and this is going to sound cliche, but it's a hundred percent accurate. You get what you pay for. Okay. Um, unfortunately, early on in my uh, business, I was a cheap ass and I was thinking I could get away with paying, you know, guys 10, 12, you know, dollars an hour. And I did for a really long time. And guess what I got for 10 or $12? I got, 10 to 12 hour, uh, you know, quality guys. These are people that are okay with making 10 to $12 an hour. And, and again, that's fine. I don't care 
if you know if if that if that's okay and you know that that meets your criteria for you know what you need to exist but just to give an example though mike tell him the direct quote from an employee about when he needed to move patio furniture oh. uh you mean the day that i fired him that exactly. one yep this fat bastard he tells me that um, he, I got a call from a customer or something and they're like, yeah, everything looked good, except your guy didn't move anything from the front porch. He, we were cleaning the front porch. Um, he didn't move any of the potted plants. He, none of the flowers didn't even move like fabric, of uh, pillows or anything like that, which got bleached out. And, um, so I, I call him and I'm like, I just got a call from a customer. This was the house. And uh, they said that you guys, you know, this, this guy says, you don't, you don't pay me to move stuff. You pay me to wash stuff. Dang. Drop the mic. And know what I said? What? That was the last time I'm ever paying you to wash anything because you're fired. Right. But in order to get good people, you have to, you have to hire right. Okay. There is a, there is a process that, that I use. Um, that it vets people. There is a, a series of stages or obstacles, if you will, that potential employees need to overcome in order to prove to me that they actually are worthy of moving to the next step in the hiring process. And, and I go over all that in the next level program. Um, so I'm not going to go over it here, but you have to, you have to set um, uh, obstacles for them to overcome to prove to you that they are actually somebody that you might consider working for you, right? And if they can't pass this, these obstacles, they are not a good choice. You are going to have to end up going through this entire process very soon because they're not going to work out. So hiring the, the hiring process is very, very important. You have to vet these people and you have to understand the right questions to ask and the right, you know, uh, funnel to, to put them through in order to, to even hire them. Then it comes to how much are you going to pay somebody? Now, if you pay somebody $10 an hour, you're going to get somebody that's worth $10 an hour. Um, when you start raising that bar, you're going to get people that are looking at that position uh, uh, that are a little bit more qualified. They are a little smarter. They are a better, they are going to be a better employee because they've already got the expectations that I am worth this, right? If you think you're worth $10 an hour, you're probably worth $10 an hour. But if you think you're worth $25 or $30 an hour, those are the type of people that I want, okay? Okay. And honestly, and, and, and it was Justin who is the one that really kind of opened my eyes to this because I had really good employees and I was probably underpaying them. And Justin said, Hey, you know, like, what would you do if, um, so-and-so left tomorrow? And I was like, oh, well, that would suck. I'd have to find somebody. I'd have to train somebody. I'd have to, you know, do this, that, and the other. And you don't want to be in that situation. So you have to take good care of your people. Um, so that's one of the biggest things as far as hiring is you have to take care of them. You have to care about them. You have to make sure they got everything that they need. The equipment is operational. The trucks are in good order that they're not, you know, uh, they, they, they've got all the tools they need. They've got the, the equipment that they need. They've got the replacement parts, the consumables on the truck. Uh, they've got, backup soft wash pump. So if something goes wrong, they've got it. And then you have to train them to know how to utilize all of these tools that you're providing, the equipment that you're providing, how to, how to switch out a pump, how to switch out, you know, the various things we take it for granted as, as the guys that are out there doing it. That's another thing that you're going to have. You have to train these employees to be as good as they can possibly be, right? Yes, there is always going to be a learning curve. Yes, they are going to be calling you. They are going to be needing you to troubleshoot over the phone uh, when they're out on the job and, you know, because things are going to come up. We know this. We live it every single day. Things come up almost every single day that, you know, become second nature to us. And we know the workarounds. We know the little fixes. We know that chemical injectors can go bad sometimes and they're not going to pull the, the chemical. And sometimes you just need to, you know, uh, unscrew it, uh, spray a little WD-40, make sure that ball is nice and clean. The spring is functional, put it all back together and it starts sucking chemical again. It takes us five minutes, but think about how much time it's, it took you wasted time the first time that that happened. And you were trying to troubleshoot and you didn't know what was going on and, and you wasted all this time, right? Well, that time 
equates to money and profitability. And so training people up, getting them up to speed. And, and we use how to wash to train all of our employees because we want them to know everything that could possibly go wrong. We want them to understand all the chemicals that we use on a daily basis. We want them to know the processes, the procedures, how to break down, how to break up, how to, you know, protect the property, how to, well, you know, everything. We use the we use how to wash to do that because if you don't have properly trained employees, they're going to waste time, they're going to waste money, they're going to underserve the customers, and it's going to make you look bad. So, education and training is so important. We could probably do, and we probably will in the future, an entire like sit down live like this talking about how to get off the truck. That's why we built the next level course because literally there were so many components to it, and like me and Mike actually spent six months building that out, like. That was a huge undertaking, but we did it to give you the keys to the kingdom with regards to how to get off of the truck. Because there's just so many things that go into it. Like Mike said, hiring, one thing we didn't cover is turnover, right? So if you hire low, then your turnover is higher, and then you have to train more people. And that was my next question, Mike. Training. How do we how do we train employees? Is it? Uh, I mean, now, obviously, you're set. But in the beginning, I'm sure it was a little bit more difficult, right? Like, Yeah. So, you know, obviously... I had to be trained and I trained by doing the work, right? I bought the business. We had employees and, and it was very straightforward. Like this, this, this was, this was it. We were laying down a degreaser. We were letting it dwell for a couple minutes. And then we were surface cleaning. We were using hot water units. Um, we were using land to surface cleaners and, um, we were doing, like I said, dumpster pads, receiving areas, sidewalks, Rel relatively straightforward. Um, and, and that was the gist of my business initially for the first year or two. Then we started to move into, and even when we were doing all the, the, you know, the gas stations, it was still degreaser, pressure wash. Um, and then I'll, I'll never forget the, I was like, okay, we need to start getting into residential. Now, we, 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 we didn't know, we didn't even have bleach tanks on our trailers. We had degreaser tanks and water tanks. That's how one horse pony we were. Um, and so then I decided, you know, I was forced because of the economy, because it doesn't matter, but we needed to diversify. And with that diversification came the need to uh, get into residential. So my guys had never done residential. I thought, okay, if I'm going to be able to teach them how to do it, I have to know how to be able to do it. I did a bunch of research and um, I went out and I'll never forget I know the exactly where the first house was. It's on Dean Forest Road. It was a two-story, up on stilts, uh, yellow house. And I get out there, and I've got bleach, and we're gonna. I'm gonna downstream, and I'm I'm there, and I'm I'm doing it. And this house, it was a yellow house, but it was green, covered in mildew, and my bleach wasn't even touching it. And I was like, what in the world? Like, what's going on? And I was trying to figure out was it the chemical injector and blah blah blah. And I ended up packing up and leaving without even telling the customer because I didn't know what to do. So I get back then it was internet forums. I, you know, I, I start reading and I start understanding a little bit more about, you know, concentrations and mix ratios and, and the dilution factor when you're dealing with different chemical ratios and the bleed, all of the things that we teach and how to wash, but you have to learn. Everybody learns somewhere. This was 18, 18 years ago, almost 19 years ago. And, and so I had to learn how to do everything so then I could teach. So, and that's when I said, remember I said earlier, I was like, nobody can do it as good as I can. Even today, I, I, you know, I've got great employees and I challenge them all the time. I said, I guarantee you, I can do a better job than you. And of course they think, oh, you just sit in an office or you make videos. You're not going to be able to do it. Well, goddamn, yes, I can. I can wash probably better than everybody watching this too. But again, that's just me being an arrogant ass. Um, and I'm kidding. You guys probably are way better, more efficient, younger and faster and stronger. But uh, you have to understand how to do it yourself in order to train. And then you have to train them the way you want them to do it. But also, this is something key. You also have to be open minded to the fact that there are better ways in the way you're doing it. And sometimes an employee can come up with a better way. Sometimes an employee is more efficient than you. They, they see something that you don't see. And, and if you're like, well, it's my way or the highway, you're losing out on efficiency and possibly money too, right? And also the trust of the employee, right? The employee's like, well, I kind of think my way is better. And if you're a tyrant, they're going to be like, yeah, screw that guy. Like, I know my way is better. And as soon as you leave, they're going to do it your way 
anyway. They're the way they do it anyway. So I think having a firm understanding that you don't know everything, there are better ways out there, be open-minded, um, but also make sure that you train everybody up the way that you want your business to be represented and the way you want it to be run. Right. So as you guys can see, we've talked more about this topic than any of the previous topics, and that is because this is the hardest step. This is the hardest step to get into. There's so many other questions that we could get into, but we're not going to today because I just wanted to give you guys a step, right? It's the steps. So first stage was consideration. You're thinking about starting the business. Second stage, you take the action from thinking about it and actually doing it. And now you're in the part-time phase or you know, whenever you can do the jobs. You then graduate from part-time into full-time whenever you take the right actions, when you get the lead flow right, when you start doing the right jobs, when you start upselling, when you start using software like Quota Q to start keeping track of customers, sending estimates, payments, all that kind of stuff. And then comes the hardest part. You're full-time in your business. You start to max out. You start to reach that, that top-level capability, and you start bumping up against it, doing the same numbers every year. How do you break through that? You got to get off the truck. It's the only way to scale, and it's the hardest part. Now, once you get to where Mike's gotten off of the truck, multiple crews running, everything systematized, you now have something packaged that's super nice and it's the hardest thing to build. This is why guys won't get off the truck. This is why they will die on the truck because it's the hardest piece. But once you have it and you're off of it, now you can sell the business. And this is ultimately how you build the million dollar wash business. Because Mike, right now your company does a ton of money a year. And you could probably multiply that out times a few times and you would be able to sell your business for a good amount over a million dollars. Right. So kind of, oh, speak, yeah, without a doubt, kind of speak to what had to happen from, you know, when you took over the business of just uh, running it and then obviously all these steps, but like into where it is now to where it'd be perfect to sell and somebody would take the keys over. The first and most important thing is you have to, under you have to keep good books, right? Because you can assign any value to a business, but unless um, you have got the books to keep it to back it up and say, like, yes, we did X amount of dollars this year. Uh, these were our expenses. Uh, this was our labor. This, you know, like, you know, uh, and a legitimate business that's doing that type of money has that information. And if you don't, or if you're just starting out, like, Start now. Quote IQ can handle all of that for you if if that's the route that you want to go. But you have to have actual, you know, the information uh, to to prove what the business is worth. Um, but to in, in order to get to the point, um, I like uh, ask the question again because now I'm, so I'm, I'm getting I'm, to the point where you can sell it, right? So you took over the business, right, Mike? And the business was okay, but you implemented all these systems and things in place that almost make it run like a machine at this point. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So right. A, diversification, right? You can't have all of your eggs in one basket. Um, and Crystal, do you remember when um, I came home and said I was going to buy a pressure washing business? I did. And what did I say? You tell me what you said. What do you know about? Yeah, she said, what do you know? She's taking the dogs for the walk. They stay under my desk. Um, so... Uh, a diversification. You have to, if you have all of your eggs in one basket and like for me, the economy took a shit and restaurants stopped cleaning because people weren't going. This was 2009. They, they weren't, they weren't it, the economy, the economy forced my hand. I had all of my eggs in one basket and I panicked. Um, so that made me realize I have to be in residential. I have to be in multifamily. I have to be in commercial. I have to be in industrial. We have to have our, our fingers in a bunch of different pies, um, because, you know, businesses fluctuate. If you're solely dependent upon residential, what happens in the winter? Things slow down. But if you've got route work, if you've got, you know, uh, big apartment jobs that are lined up for the, the slower times, then you're not, uh, as you have the ability to, uh, you know, stay healthy. The business, the health of the business is, is continual and, and it's, 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 you know, uh, what's the word? Um, it doesn't go right, right, right. more consistent. consistent. Um, but so, yeah, I, I think, um, you have to build the business to a point where, uh, it is an automated system either by hiring people or implementing software and processes in your business that, that streamline it. Because if you are that guy that uh, is doing everything the hard way, just like Justin said, you're never going to be able to scale because you're doing everything yourself. There's not enough time in the day. Uh, you'll net you're, you're capped at how much you can make. So 
you know, uh, automation, um, uh, systems, hiring the right people and, uh, and, and diversification are the keys in my opinion to, um, you know, being able to, to grow the business to something that somebody would actually want to buy. And even then, you know, it's, it's a difficult sell because a lot of what we do, like our equipment there, there is, there is an, a value to it, right? We can assign a very specific value to equipment. Um, then you've got relationships, right? You've got customers. Now, customers, who are they loyal to? Are they loyal to the owner? Are they loyal to the business? Are they loyal to, you know, what is it that they're loyal to? So that's, it's always been difficult. I've bought a couple businesses that I thought were going to really help my business grow. And they, I, I ended up just with some freaking equipment because, you know, the customers, they weren't loyal and they, they went a different direction, you know? So I don't know. There, there are so many components that, that come into play um, when you're talking about, you know, selling a business. So, but essentially if the easiest way to get to a, a million dollar wash business is to build it up through all these different steps and then ultimately sell it because, you know, you could be like Mike T. Mike T runs a million dollar wash business and he sells off little sections of it, right? If that he doesn't want to do anymore, just sells them off, right? Well, and or I think you also, you know, and maybe it's not, maybe it's not selling it off, you know, like what's the end game? And, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Like you have to have an end game. You have to have, like we set goals every year, like, okay, I want to achieve this, this, and this, and these are the ways that I'm going to do it. Well, okay. So, you know, do you want to retire at age 50, age 60, whatever the case is, right? How are you going to get there? Set the goal and then reverse engineer how you're going to achieve that goal. That's how we reach goals. We have to, we have, to have realistic um, things in place that will allow us to get to those goals or to exceed those goals. Now, um, maybe it's you've got an employee that has potential to take over the business, then you're able to kind of, you know, uh, take a back seat, maintain a portion of the business, keep a, you know, a profit sharing situation. I've got friends who have, uh, like one of my friends, he owns a, a sizable, um, automotive repair shop, right? Great, great business. Uh, and those dudes make a freaking killing. Well, it was his dad's business. Then he and his brother took over his dad kind of, you know, he just sits at home now and he gets a paycheck. Now, these guys, my fr my friends, they're getting to the age where their sons are coming up and they're going to take over and then they get to kind of step back and enjoy the fruits of the labor, right? They spent years and years building this up. Now it's time to enjoy what you built. Far too often, I see guys that are 60 years old, 65 years old, and they built great businesses. But there's no end game. They're like, oh, it's still Saturday and Sunday and I'm still out working. Well, God damn, if I'm 60 something years old, there is no way I'm going to be out working. I want to have people in place that can manage this for me, or I want to sell it. So having an end game, whether it's selling it outright, bringing somebody in, maybe it's a family member. I mean, we've got um, Elijah, another one of the guys uh, that is, is, has done unbelievably well for himself. He's got kids that love the business. They're in the business. And eventually Elijah's not a, he's not an old guy at all, but at some point I bet you Elijah wants to, you know, take the boat out and hang out with the wife as opposed to being out there, you know, working and managing every single day. So there's a lot of ways to, you know, the, that final level, whether it's selling it, whether it's, you know, easing your way out and still getting a piece of it, you know, but if you don't have a game plan on what you want to do, you're, you're going to be 90 years old and you're still going to be out there freaking washing. And that sounds miserable. Boom. So if you take anything from this video, build out an exit strategy. I'm going to go through the steps one more time. Consideration, right? Get out of consideration as fast as possible. Get into the side hustle, get into the part-time, take action to get there from side hustle and part-time. We then need to come up with a concrete plan, concrete strategy. We need to get uh, dialed in with our efforts, leverage our relationships, figure out our lead flow, do all the things in order to build the schedule out for the full week. From that point, we need to say, how can we step out of this? Because then we're hitting our max. We're, we're, we're coming up against that, that glass ceiling, if you will, from full time into 
getting off of the truck and just being the operator of the business. And then the last step of that, as Mike mentioned, would be kind of your exit strategy. Do you sell the business? Do you sell off parts of the business? Do you bring someone else in to run it and you keep a piece of it? So these are the five levels of how to get to the million dollar wash business. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Mike, we need a word of the day. What do you want the word of the day to be? Well, do we want to answer any of these questions before we hop off? Uh, or have we? Do you think so? Okay. What questions do you want to answer? I don't know. Um, I mean, somebody asked if we can go, no asked if we can go over quoting. I have specific videos on my channel with regards to how to quote, um, here in Australia, he says he pays his workers $40 an hour. I think that's beautiful. One of the things you get into with workers, right? Is it's, it's a mutual relationship with regards to, uh, keeping each other in, in place The The employee needs to be good enough for the, um, business owner to be like, I really don't want to lose them. And the pay needs to be good enough to where the employee is like, I don't want to lose this job. So I think $40 an hour is, uh, you know, an excellent situation for both sides of the equation, especially if the worker's good. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah. Uh, well, the, if we can put this into perspective with the exchange rate today, one U S dollar is worth a dollar 55 in Australia. So, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a wage, right? It's $40 an hour. That's outstanding. It's probably what, um, like $25, $30 an hour max, right? Mm, yeah, probably right around there. Yeah. So uh, Which is a right, right, right around like the exact, right? Exactly what, what we pay, right? Um, our top guys that perform. And, and then there's, all, you know, the other component is incentives, right? Like I, I really think that uh, A, we offer on all of our invoices, there's a tip option, right? It's in quote IQ. But what that does is that allows us, uh, allows my guys to make extra money, right? They're getting paid well. Um, and it's just a little incentive for them to be like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I know if I, you know, work a little harder, I, if, if the person doesn't give me a tip right there, they're going to probably do it when they pay the invoice. So, um, yeah. Incentivizing. Uh, somebody had asked, um, let's see where it was. Is giving someone a $1 raise per month a good idea to motivate them if they hit your performance indicators? Um, that just seems, okay, so you never want to put like a raise structure in place that's finite like that because at some point the worker is then going to be making more per hour than necessarily what they're worth. So maybe you would have a cap on it. Or like Mike said, you would incentivize if they hit certain metrics within the business. If they make a certain amount of money, they get a percentage off of it. There's a lot of different ways that you can incentivize the tips thing. Mike, Mike gets a ton more out of his workers just because if they get a tip, they keep the whole tip. And so it incentivizes them to do more on site, to be nicer yeah. to the customers, things of that nature. Well, shit, just like yesterday, I put out a video um, and if I, I don't even remember where it was in there, but um, you know, Mac had set up his tripod. He's out there working and the homeowner comes out and like, you see his hand come across the, the screen and gives it to Mac and Mac's like, Oh, you don't have to do that. He's like, no, but I want to, you you know, and Mac's like, Oh, thank you so much. So like it, it, he probably makes, because he goes above and beyond every single job from the initial contact with the customer, right? He's very pleasant. He's outgoing. Um, he walks them, you know, through the process about what, what's going to happen. Um, so there's, there's no miscommunication and, and then he performs above expectation. And then the customers see this, they enjoy him. He's a good guy. He's smiling. He's happy. He's well-dressed. He does a great job. He's performing. They, they want to, they want to tip him because that's what people do. We are offering a luxury service. Okay. People that hire pressure washing companies and at least pay the prices that we charge in my business, they got to have money and people with money understand that, you know, when you go to a nice restaurant, you're going to leave a 20% minimum tip. Uh, I mean, the, the bellman or the, 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 the guy that parks my car, like all of these people, you know, I'm, I'm, I've always got cash in my pocket either to get a table at a restaurant, um, when there's no reservations or because, you know, they've, they've done a good job for me and they've been polite and they, you know, make my life a little bit easier. So, um, Oh, did I just do it? <sighs> Don't do it again. Mike. keep your thumb off the screen. <laughs> I know. Anyway. Um, yeah, the tips are uh, a great way for, um, guys to make extra money. We actually talk about uh, a lot of these things, uh, a lot of high, higher level things on the three secrets that got Mike to over $750,000 in his business in um, a web class that we're probably going to be doing maybe next Wednesday or Thursday. 
Um, so go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Oh, I was going to yell. Uh, I want some. Um... What, what is what is Will Ferrell yell? Mom, meatloaf, meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf. I was going to yell at Crystal to see. I can't remember if we've got lacrosse. I know Matthew's done with lacrosse, but McKenna, she still has some. So I don't know. I think we're, I think we're going to shoot for Wednesday for that class. Okay, beautiful. So uh, we'll keep you guys notified. We'll obviously send out some emails and things like that. So um, I think we have. I mean, we have one other question. You want you want to answer one more question, Mike? Yeah. I currently work a job with a pension after 30 years. I'm looking to take this full time and leave that position. What kind of investments would you advise I get and how much to invest? You cool if I answer this one first? Yeah, please. I would say get a financial advisor first and foremost. I would not take financial advice from anyone on the internet. Um, I mean, you could, but I would get somebody that works at your, I mean, I assume that you bank with somebody. They have financial advisors there because they want to manage your money. So I would meet with a financial advisor. I'd put together a plan based on your goals. Obviously from you messaging this, we obviously don't know anything about you. And then you ask if you need to invest yearly. One of the things my financial planner says is it's all about time in market. So I would dedicate a percentage of earned income. And obviously, like I said, don't take financial advice from people on the internet, dedicate a percentage of earned income into your investment accounts and average in over time, because that's going to give you the greatest return. And that's my current philosophy. Mike, what do you think? Yeah. So he's current job with pension after 30 years. So that would lead me to believe that you have been working for a while. So you might have a little bit of age on you. Um, and when you are investing, um, there is a risk reward thing, right? Uh, when when I was younger, uh, I, I took a much higher risk um, in my investments because I had a much longer time time to recoup should I make a wrong decision and my investments don't go the way that I want. Uh, now, as I'm getting older and my investments um, in in I, I have kind of uh, lessened the risk and. You know, these are mutual funds. These are these are things of that nature where you um, you're you're allowing other people to manage. Um, I'm sure with if you've got a pension, you probably got a 401k. Therefore, somebody's managing that. You know, and you can determine risk level like that. But again, yes, take a percentage uh, and definitely put it into something. Right? Don't don't just put it into a uh, into a, a checking account or a savings account because the return on that is not going to be what you want. Um, I have got tons of different um, uh, investments, retirement type investments that uh, I, I have percentages of, and, and it's not a percentage of income. It's just every, every week I've got X amount of dollars going from this account to other accounts. So it's just continual. I don't even see it. I don't have to do it manually. And, and the way that I've always kind of figured that is, is I, I just I just want it to happen automatically. I've got I've got these same accounts set up for all of my kids, and each week money is just going from you know my accounts into these other accounts that are you know, that you know there are returns. So that's what I would do, and and yes, hire somebody to help you with these choices. Perfect, perfect. Uh, one more. Um, well, two more. Okay, Shu says, thanks for setting this up today, fellas. We're lucky this sort of online live mastermind exists for us. Much love from Toronto, Canada. Really appreciate that, Shu. Thank you so much for the uh, kind words. Uh, also, uh, Pocono says, thanks, gentlemen. I Pocono. hope I pronounced it. Pocono? A uh, Pocono. Okay, okay, Pocono. This guy says, going with John, I like him already. You guys helped me out. We started a year and a half ago with a Home Depot, two and a half gallon per minute, which is what I did as well. We stepped up to a four gallon per minute Simpson, what I did as well. We just built out our own trailer with a five and a half gallon per minute. Justin, we watched a ton of your videos. Mike didn't say anything about you, big guy. Sorry to um, say. Mike, oh, wait, I think he did. Keep going. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't see anything else. Uh, thank you so much for your comment, John. We have not yeah, gone with John said, Mike taught us not to be a pushover with some customers that tried us. Exactly. And I'm glad that John found my channel too, because I'm sure that's <laughs> why you've had success. Second afterthought, uh, afterthought channel. Um, anyway, Mike, we have to, we, oh, every guest that comes on has to pick the word of the day. Even though I'm All a right, Justin, well, since you're my guest, go ahead and pick it. All right, word of the day is Pocono. If you guys made this far in the video, comment down below Pocono because I pronounced it wrong. Pocono. Hey, <laughs> tomato, tomato. You know what I'm saying? Hey, rotisserie, roast, something else. Rotisseries, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you guys missed, 
Mike's uh, police story at the beginning of this. I definitely re rewind it because uh, Mike loves to run out with the police. Um, last one because I appreciate it. Dude, you guys are so awesome on this fucking live. I really appreciate you guys. Just wanted to say thank you for all of your free content. I hit the ground running and did over 100K my first season, bro. Imagine, imagine what you're going to do, Ozark, when you, when you, when you dial into some of this. Uh, if you guys think that this is good, I'm just going to say this right here, okay? Me and Mike try to over deliver on everything we do. If you guys think the content that we put on YouTube is good, imagine how good the content is inside of the courses where we're actually so structured. These courses are like six and eight hours long. Our best information. If any of you guys are thinking about doing any of these courses, I would highly recommend Local Dom 2. Like I said, the best course that we've ever put together on marketing. Cor this course, the information in this course has landed us 10, 20, 30, $40,000 jobs. Landed Mike a $100,000 job. I'm just going to say that one more time just because it needs to be said and it's grossly underpriced. Um, last comment before we go. Cook, what's good? What's up? Good looking fellas. I appreciate that, Cook. Cook uses Quote IQ. If you guys haven't checked out Quote IQ already, be sure to check it out. First link in the comment section description. Try new tier for a dollar. Anyway, Mike, anything else? No. Word of the day. Pocono. Pocono. Hashtag your own. My name is Justice Forever. Self-employed. Until next time, I'll start and get that money, baby. Peace. See ya.